A corrupt people cannot trust their own society. Globally, corruption is the norm. I was surprised that some cultures had found a cure. My first experience of a culture of trust was in Holland. My host took me to a dairy to buy milk. I had never heard of machines milking cows. No one was selling the milk. My friend just opened the tap, filled his jug. Then he grabbed a bowl filled with cash, paid in 20 guilders note, took the change and started walking away with his milk. I was stunned. I said, man, if you were an Indian, you would take the milk and the money. He laughed. In a flash, I understood a basic cause of my nation's poverty. If customers took the milk and the money, the dairy owner would have to hire a sales girl. But if the consumer is corrupt, why would the supplier be honest? He would add water to increase the quantity of milk. Frustrated by watered down milk, the consumer would ask the government to appoint milk inspectors. But why should the inspector be honest? He would take bribes and allow adulterated milk to be sold. The consumer will have to bear the cost of the milk, the water, sales girl, the inspector and the bribe, none of which add any value to the milk. In paying for them, the consumer pays simply for his sin. Paying for all this means that you don't have money left to buy products that actually add value, such as milk turned into ice cream or cheese. How did Holland create a culture of such integrity? Transforming a nation requires cultivating character. That is why God gave us the scriptures. Apostle Paul wrote, all scripture is given by God's inspiration and is profitable for correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Poverty does not cause corruption. Corruption causes poverty. To combat both, our nations need more than aid, investment or protests. They need hearts and minds that are transformed by God's word and spirit.